Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Corin, also known as the Kitten Choreographer, and I'm a teen with a passion for animal rescue and, in particular, kitten rescue. I did say in my last video that I wanted to do mostly kitten content still, and I do, and I do. But, I'm bringing back a story time slash makeup content for today. Today I was just in the mood to film, because, you know, I, I need to film tonight if I want to try and get a video out on time, which... Still, who knows if that'll happen? Who knows? And no one ever knows. Not even me. Yes, yeah, so I have some new makeup I'm super excited to play with. I got some new Super Shocks from ColourPop. Yes, I put it in a Sephora bag. Yes, I'm just gonna play with this, but it's mostly going to be like a story time type thing. So I've got a couple story times. I've got a couple things that I want to talk about because my life is never just simple. It's never just straightforward. It never goes the way that would be easiest for me. So I've got some stuff today, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and we can get started with the talking and the makeup. So I don't know exactly what I want to do with my eyes, so I guess I'm just gonna figure out as I go along. So basically, I'm kind of just doing a story time today. Also, if you see glitter flux or sparkle, flex on my face already. It is evening and I already did my makeup once today but I wanted to redo it. So Milani eyeshadow primer. So what I'm going to talk about first is an experience that I had yesterday and it is talking about something that happened because I am non-binary. So yes if you are new here if you did not know I am non-binary. I use they them pronouns and yes I do like makeup and I still wear makeup and I still look kind of girly even though I'm non-binary but I dress how I want and that does not change my identity. So basically, I have gender dysphoria. I've been diagnosed with it for probably about a year now. One sec, I'm just gonna show you. So I got some of the Disney Princess Super Shock Shadows from ColourPop. And by some, I mean a lot of them. This isn't even all of them, but I'm gonna use a few of them today. We're gonna do teal, because I like blue. But I'm gonna start with my big boy Beauty Bay Bright Matte Palette and go into paradise here because I also want to have some like baby blue in the look essentially. Yes, I'm non-binary and I do have gender dysphoria and if you don't know what gender dysphoria is, it's something that a lot of trans people have that basically is like an immense feeling that they're in the wrong body. I don't know, that's the easiest way to explain it. It's not a dictionary definition. It's just based on like my experience. A lot of trans people have gender dysphoria and while I am non-binary, that does fall under the trans umbrella because I feel like I'm not the gender that I was born as. Yes, I have gender dysphoria and I have it about several things. Probably the two I can think of most are my voice and my chest, but mostly my chest, I would say. You know, I've got some big breasts using the official terms here because I try and be family fun. I have some bigger breasts and I have a lot of dysphoria around that. So pretty much as soon as I figured out I have dysphoria around my chest, I was like, I want surgery. But of course, surgery is a very permanent thing. So I did decide that I wanted to, you know, kind of explore my identity a little bit more before I decided on something so permanent. So it's been over a year since I kind of came out, I think. I actually started going to a new primary care doctor recently that specializes in LGBTQ plus patients, which is great. I really like her, but basically we talked about some surgery options and she referred me to a plastic surgeon. Colourpop High Tide going into Urchin. So yes, I have decided that I want a breast reduction and I don't want a full top surgery and I know that is probably not what most people that want surgery and are trans would do if they have chest dysphoria, but I sometimes feel a little bit more gender fluid, not necessarily in my identity, but in the way I feel like dressing for a day. I kind of feel like dressing in different ways and I would love to be able to pass more feminine one day, like just play up my feminine features like my breasts, but then I would also like the option to dress more masculine one day and actually look more masculine, which is hard to do when you have big breasts. So I have decided that I do want a reduction, not a complete chop. That is what I decided, so I got referred to this surgeon. One thing I will state before I talk about my experience there is that I have great anxiety over doctors. I do have lots of mental health struggles, one of them being really bad anxiety. Of course, sometimes I have anxiety for no reason at all, but um, one thing that causes a lot of extra anxiety for me is doctors. I have had a lot, a lot of bad experiences with doctors, and so I get immense anxiety every single time I have to go to one. A plastic surgeon is 
a doctor and so I was very very nervous to go and what I was doing is just a consultation so it was nothing permanent no like scheduling appointments it was literally just going to get more information about the surgery because I honestly don't know much about it I've done a little bit of research but it was really just surface level and I wanted to actually talk to a doctor in my town that would potentially do it to get more information from them and one thing is I don't like male doctors when it comes to doctors that are going to be looking at my female parts. And I had decided there aren't that many female plastic surgeons around me, so I had said it's okay for me to go to a male one. Like, I'm just, I'm gonna put up with it, it's gonna be okay. So, we go. I'm extremely anxious because doctor's office, and also I'd never met the doctor before. So I went in and I'm thinking a consultation will be just talking, you know, like I won't be doing much other than talking because consulting someone usually is talking. But no, they did want to see the area they would be working on. So I had to put on one of those hospital thingies and they did have to do like a little examination of my breasts, which I did not like because I d was not prepared for it. Obviously I knew that if I was going to have a chest surgery they would have to look at my chest but I did not know that that was going to be happening the day I went like the first time so I hadn't like mentally prepared myself yet essentially. So that was immediately a very scary thing because I did not know that would be happening and maybe everyone else watching this is like obviously that was gonna happen but I didn't know that would be happening so yes that was kind of a shock so this doctor works at a university so you know university doctors at least the ones in my area usually have student doctors with them because it's a university so they're going to put these students in their program under these doctors so that they can learn in their final years of medical school so I will say the student doctor was very pleasant she was very nice I would have loved for her to be my surgeon in a few years maybe when she's more experienced. She was very nice, she was very polite, very respectful of my pronouns, you know, very, she was just great. She was very nice, I have no complaints about her, and then the doctor comes in. That's when everything went wrong, yeah. Basically, I've told you I want a reduction, and I did know that there was a possibility that I would not be able to get the surgery until I was 18. I think there might be a law in the state that I live in that people under 18 can't get cosmetic surgeries, which, because I have no physical pain that's what a breast reduction would be considered I don't think it's a cosmetic surgery because it's something for my mental health but that is what the state classifies it as so I'm not sure I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the surgery until I'm 18 and I was like half expecting to hear that but if the doctor had just said I'm sorry I cannot perform this surgery on you because you're under 18 that is the rules that is the law it comes into legality issues I would have been okay like that's sad but thanks for letting me know nicely Okay, I have a list here, a little list, so I don't forget to tell you any of the BS that he told me. So, he comes in, and he's very confused looking, and he sits down, and he goes, So you have no reason for this surgery? And I'm just like, what? And he's like, D pain, do you have any pain? And I'm like, well, not physically, because mental dysphoria thing and he's like then you have no reason for the surgery you don't you don't need it yeah he's like you have no reason for the surgery and i explained to him like dysphoria you know i have i'm going to this touch the sky merida super shock Ooh, that's pretty but um so he basically like tells me even after i'm telling him like mental health reasons he basically is like you have no reason for the surgery and he's so baffled he's so confused which is it's really weird it's really mm, mm. and then he like doesn't respect my pronouns at all like I told him multiple times I go by they them pronouns my mom told him multiple times I go by they them pronouns and he just was not trying he was not getting it he was definitely being a butthole and using she her he was using my chosen name but I think it was because the way this doctor system works you can put in your preferred names and then like the doctor actually has to go to your profile to see your legal name and he has to like search for it so I think he hadn't searched for and hadn't seen my legal name so that's what he was just going by my chosen name so not respecting my pronouns and saying that I have no reason for the surgery essentially because I don't have any physical pain so why would I need it he did not understand you know then it gets to he um kind of said it in a way but oh you're kind of too young to decide about something like this you know I don't remember exactly what he said when I have a bad experience my brain like starts blocking it out immediately but he essentially 
says like, but you're like a little young to make a decision as big as like wanting a breast reduction. I'm like, well, I've been thinking about it for a long time and I just think that that's what I want. And he kind of just like brushes me off a bit. I think then I might be mixing up the order of things, but I mentioned something along lines of like being trans and having body dysphoria. And he's like, but oh, people like that usually want to have a full top surgery or something like that. He used like fancy um, medical word for it. And I'm like, well, yeah, a lot of them do, but this is, you know, what I want. And he's like, no, but people like that want this surgery, a cis man speaking for the entirety of the trans community is hilarious in a very sad way to me because I know what type of surgery I want, you know? Like, I've thought about it for a while, it's my body, and I feel like I can choose what type of surgery I want and not what I need because mental health reasons. But I'm so excited to talk about him with my therapist because I know she's just gonna make fun of him and it's gonna make me feel so much better, I'm so excited. After telling me that I essentially was asking for the wrong surgery for people like me, he didn't even say trans people, he said people like me, um, or people like you is what he said because he was talking to me and I'm yeah, yeah. So then he pulls out another excuse for why I shouldn't be getting this surgery because apparently he thinks I like walked in for a consultation about why not to get the surgery instead of like me talking about how to get the surgery like you think. If you went in for a consultation about the surgery you would like know what surgery you want and like know that you were wanting to get the surgery but apparently he did not see it that way. But then he brings up the thing of like oh do you want to have kids and I'm like no I don't want to have biological kids because I know 100% I do not want biological children pregnant he freaks me out. I'm most likely bipolar, so I have a much higher chance of getting postpartum psychosis, which, yeah, not something I want to deal with. I also have a history of complicated births in my family. At least my mom had a rough pregnancy with me. So yes, I know I do not want to be pregnant. I do want to have kids, but I want to adopt. But then he goes like, oh, but you probably change your mind. It just makes me so angry because him. <laughs> A cis white man is telling me that I will want to have kids, which I've heard of stuff like that being told to people before, but to have someone actually tell it to you is like a different thing. Like, oh, someone actually told me what I should do with my body and it's not like someone close to me at all. It's a doctor that I just met who I did not go to. <laughs> for like relationship advice and whether or not I should get pregnant in the future. He's, you know, implying that I'll want to have kids in the future and I'll change my mind. And keep in mind, this surgery does not prevent people from being able to get pregnant. It is a breast reduction. The only thing it prevents people from doing is breastfeeding, which a lot of parents aren't able to breastfeed. Also, a lot of people don't want to breastfeed, you know? You can still be a good parent and still have a nice baby without breastfeeding. But apparently that was very important to him as someone that obviously knows so much about babies, being a plastic surgeon and not a gynecologist or a pediatrician. So I think I went through my entire list of things, but let's just reiterate a bit. You know, I've told you everything. You're probably not believing it, just like I'm still not believing that this happened to me yesterday because of the audacity of this man. So no pronoun and respect, no reason for this surgery because I do not have any physical pain. I'm too young to decide. I want kids in the future. And people like me want top surgery and not breast reductions. Oh my goodness. Like Jesus, this man does not need to handle trans patients. I have no words. If you're wondering if that upset me, yes. Yes, it did. I cried a lot yesterday and I'm still very upset about it today. I'm just joking because I'm gonna start crying if I don't joke. So I leave the building and I'm just like, I'll talk about it in the car, mom, because I, I just, I don't want to talk about it in the building. We walk out of the building, which took a little bit because we had to like go down an elevator and out bunch of pasta people. And while my mom and I are walking to the car, my mom goes, I'm too angry to even think right now or to even speak right now. I, I don't remember which one she said, but it was one of those. But I get in the car and I immediately start crying because it really upset me. And the thing is, the thing about me is I have had a lot of experiences similar to that. I've had a lot of people invalidate me and my feelings a lot before. I've had other people tell me, oh, it's not that bad before. It's all in your head. You're too sensitive, blah, 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 blah. But now, so now my anxiety and the demon in my head tells me that it wasn't that big of a deal and that I'm just too sensitive. 
So it, it did really validate my feelings and make me feel better to know that my mom was very angry too because it made me realize that I was not overreacting because she was very upset about it too. And I was crying. I was so upset. I just felt so invalidated and so small. I just felt so bad. I don't even know how to put it into words. It's like I just felt so awful. Like how could a doctor that I went to to help me treat me so awfully? And my mom gets me pizza for lunch because she felt bad for me. She was apologizing so much and I feel bad because it's not her fault. It's not her fault at all. She was recommended this doctor by a person that specializes in LGBTQ people, which I guess they just did not know this doctor very well to recommend that by Beauty Changemaker Foundation. So we get home and my mom files a formal complaint because the way he treated me was not acceptable at all. And she filed a formal complaint with the university, like the complaint department at the university that he works for. And the complaint department seemed to take it very seriously. They apologized a lot. They said they'd be talking to a supervisor and also we basically at the college that I was going to for this they have like a council um for people oh let me see that just a bit they have a council with some people that are like their job is to try and keep the campus a safe spice for LGBTQ people so they were gonna make them have a meeting with him as well and yeah I hope he gets fired I I doubt he will like he's well up but at least he's old so he'll retire within 10 years or so, so that's good. I feel so bad for any other trans person that's been invalidated by him, because let's be honest, if he did that to me, he's done it to someone else. But one other thing that's kind of good that came out of that situation was my mom's in this Facebook group for parents of trans people in my town, and she posted on there like about our terrible experience and that no one should go there for their surgeries. And a couple people actually commented that he done their surgeries and he did a really bad job. I feel really bad for them, but I do feel like I kind of dodged a bullet. I would not want a botched chest. <laughs> we are going to someone else for when I am able to get the surgery. I will be going to a different doctor. That does not invalidate my feelings and my identity. We were able to get some people's appointments canceled because at least one person, I can't remember if there was more, but one parent of a trans teen commented like, oh, we had an appointment with him in October. Uh, yeah, we canceled because I, no, no, that's unacceptable. We're not dealing with that. So I hopefully some change will come out of this, but just, it was just a crappy experience. Like how do some old people that have no experience with the trans community think it's okay to like, oh, okay. I'm just so angry. I'm like, I'm angry, I'm sad, I'm upset. Again, and I, this is not nearly the first time it's happened. This unfortunately will probably not be the last time it will happen, but as is life, I guess. I do have a new powder. This is the number seven triple action finishing powder in light. Oh, I did tell you, I love the Super Shock formula already, so I wasn't, it wasn't really a formula review. I know I love it already. I've panned quite a few of them before, or at least like hit pan, not necessarily finished them up. I guess that's all said and done. Still hurts. Some people suck and should probably be fired. I guess if we're talking about ways I feel invalidated as a non-binary person, let's just keep it rolling then. I've got another thing I thought about this morning that, you know, it kind of makes me peeved. I haven't really talked about this interest of mine on the channel before ever, I don't think, but I love The Sims 4. I know it's like a cheesy game. People think it's a kid game. I love it. Come at me, come at me, but The Sims 4 is amazing. And it's not amazing for like being incredibly innovative. It's just so relaxing. I love playing it. I love going through these storylines of different Sims lives. It's so relaxing. I will play it for hours when I'm stressed just to decompress. It is so fun. So I love playing The Sims 4. And yet I have a big complaint for them. So I love this game and I will continue to play this game despite me being kind of upset at them. My complaint is that in 2021, The Sims 4 still does not have an option to make non-binary Sims. And I am upset at this because I, as a non-binary person, cannot make myself in The Sims. If they did not claim to be inclusive, maybe I'd be a little bit less upset at this, but they claim they seem to be very proud of being inclusive and well yes they are inclusive in the gay aspect they are inc pretty inclusive in the trans aspect because you do have an option to like either make a man sim with a feminine body type or a 
woman sim with a male body type and like they say to just like switch the gender if you have a sim like come out which you can't really do in game but you can pretend but you do not have an option to make a sim non-binary even if you like pretend in your head that a sim is non-binary they will still get pop-ups with gendered pronouns it's annoying it's really sad because in 2021 these sims i'm pretty sure these sims has an option to have a non-binary flag in The Sims 4. Hang on, I feel like I should double check this. I'm pretty sure they have that option. Okay, yes, yes. The Sims 4 has the option to put the non-binary flag into The Sims 4, yet they don't have an option to be non-binary in the game. So they know non-binary is a thing. They put the flag in the game. But yet you cannot be non-binary in The Sims 4. I cannot make myself in my favorite video game because I would have to misgender myself in order to make myself, which I don't really feel like doing so I have not made myself in The Sims 4 ever. And I just, it sucks because if you want to play out a non-binary storyline, you have to play pretend. <laughs> Let's see, of the free updates we got, we got toddlers, we got pawns, we got configurable stairs, we got bunk beds. non-binary people. Why can't we have non-binary people in this game? The Sims team does not think it's important. And if they do think it's important, they don't think it's as important as pawns or any matter of other content they've added. I'm so, you know, it just, it makes me upset. Like a lot of the time I ignore it because I do still really like the game, but you know, sometimes it really gets to me. Like today I was just, you know, sitting, thinking, you know, dwelling and I'm like, wow, it sucks. It really, really sucks that we do not have non-binary sims in the sims game. Yet we have the non-binary flag, which just feels like a slap in the face. Cause they're like, oh, you can put your flag in the game, but oh, you can't put yourself in the game. I guess this video is kind of turning into a rant about my identity because I feel like I deserve to be respected. I feel like I deserve to be seen. Sometimes I feel very alone. And yes, I do know some people care about me and there are some people taking great steps towards representation but there's also a whole lot of things that are just not up to date. I'm just, I'm tired of not being seen. <laughs> and in Sims case, I'm tired of chickens being put before my identity. Yeah, I like the chickens. I did like chickens being added to the game, but I would also like to have my identity added to the game first. So you as a viewer might be wondering like, what was the point of me watching this video? All I did was complain, <laughs> but I wasn't complaining about like anything frivolous. I feel I'm kind of just trying to draw attention. If you are cis, I would like you to maybe try to just educate yourself a bit more on being non-binary. If a lot of other non-binary people are anything like me, we do not feel seen or heard a whole lot of the time. If you have any non-binary friends, please, please, please really try to use their pronouns correctly. I do know it's easy to make mistakes, but please try. If it's hard for you, practice. I know that seems weird, but you can just pretend in your head, like pretend to have a conversation about your non-binary friends to a fake other person. Or if you have another friend that also wants to practice, practice with them. So say your non-binary friend is named Alex. Well, find a friend that also wants to try and care about their identity a bit more. Oh, this is the Cinderella one that I'm just putting in my inner corner. Maybe practice just having a conversation about your friend. So, oh, say like they went to the store today, they were getting bread and I loved their outfit today. Simple things. And then, you know, go back and forth saying like, yes, I loved their boots. And then practice or even just like write out a story about them. I know that's kind of a weird one, but just write out a little couple paragraph story thing, just talking about them in a nice way, of course. But you know, cause your non-binary friends are really going to appreciate it. They're really, it just, it means so much to me when people use my pronouns. And even if it's new to a person, if they just like focus on it and try and do their best, that means so much. I'm gonna do mascara and brows and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back and I'm gonna do some highlighter, Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm. Oh yes, also I love, I mentioned this like a little bit at the beginning of the video, but also just respect whatever trans people want to wear. Trans people don't have to follow the gender norms for their gender. Like I am non-binary, but I love makeup and yes, makeup is normally seen as a feminine thing. I do not care. I still like wearing makeup, so I'm gonna do it. So yes, I'm gonna wear what I want. I wish that I was seen more, 
I wish that more people recognized my existence. Yes, I just, there's so much more to go in this world with accepting non-binary people, with accepting just LGBTQ people in general. If you are cis or if you are straight or if you are cis and straight, it would be great if you could just try and be a better ally. You know, everyone can always work to be a better ally to someone else. You know, do your research, just educate yourself, and that's gonna mean the world to some people. Always respect people because it really means so, so much. You know, the support that I've gotten from my parents literally means everything. Like, I, I don't think I would be even in a remotely decent mental place if my parents did not support me. If you are a parent, support your LGBTQ plus kids because support literally means the world in a lot of cases. And make sure your kids know that you do support the LGBTQ plus community even if you don't know if they're in that community because they could be in that community and they think that you're not supportive so they haven't told you. So always just make sure that they know you're supportive. For lips today, I'm probably just gonna go basic. I'm gonna go Bite Beauty and Leche. I'd actually rather go with a more brownie nude but it's the one I brought over, so it's the one I'm gonna use. Okay, no, I hate it, I hate it. Nope, not using this color. Decided to go for a completely different vibe. Another comfort lipstick, Nude Coco from Dominique Cosmetics. It's brown, <laughs> but I love brown. Glam Light, hot chocolate. I love a gloss. I live for a gloss. But look, it just looks so it just it just looks so much better. I've made a video complaining about transphobes before. So if you liked this video, um this rambly rant about people that do not support non-binary people, I will link in the description below my non-binary pride makeup video. I loved that video, and I think in my humble opinion that that video is a very good watch. So I've probably kept you here long enough in another video that's not about cats. I apologize. Hopefully we'll be getting back to the cat content soon, you know, whenever I feel inspired to do so. So, outro time. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more kitten content and more whatever I want to talk about content. I upload on Sundays and on Wednesdays if I can, and if I can't, then I upload whenever I want to. Also, please make sure to leave any thoughts or questions in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching again, and goodbye.